Now on WSAR's Breakfast Club, it's the Bristol Community College Update. A monthly visit with President Laura Douglas on 1480 WSAR and 95.9 FM. Sponsored by Bristol Community College. Dreams within reach. Visit bristolcc.edu. Good morning. Got a Monday, the 4th of October. Say hello to our president of Bristol Community College, Laura Douglas. Good morning. How are you? Good morning, Heck. I'm well. How about you? I'm doing okay. It's been busy, busy, busy at your place. And boy, talk about some great news. We want to talk about the uh, Mayflower Wind recent offshore wind proposal in Fall River. Boy, talk about exciting. And you at Bristol Community College are featuring uh, something pretty exciting, which we'll get to in just a moment but first uh tell us uh, how how that is all coming about as far as uh, mayflower's recent offshore wind proposal uh, something that we heard about uh, uh, over the weekend but uh, we'd, we'd love to get another update from you uh, laura what do you what do you say yeah well you know many people have thought well offshore wind is best for new bedford but uh we've always known that offshore wind is going to spread all along the coast and especially at our deep water ports and places like fall river so you know this proposal is really good for fall river uh it's a 81 million dollar investment in economic development uh by mayflower wind uh creating uh an office here in fall river which they've already established and which is very very close to the port of New Bedford, which will be the home dock for uh, Mayflower crew boats. But um, the plan involves about 1,200 megawatts uh, at Brayton Point. That's an interconnection uh, site. Uh, and the uh, establishment of operations and maintenance uh, port here in Fall River at the Borden and Remington Ironworks uh, com uh, complex. So it's going to definitely help us with the supply chain, which is the build out of all the other pieces that are necessary to support this industry that will help our local economy uh, and our infrastructure. And of course, uh, very important to all of this will be the education and training of an offshore wind workforce because you can't be in this industry without basic safety and basic technical training. And that's what Bristol Community College uh, will be providing. Yeah, the Bristol Community College, the National Offshore Wind Institute. And how how, oh, how how about how about the timing of all of this? Uh, and I know you're going to be incorporating uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion into the development of that uh, offshore wind sector. Give us a, a rundown of what that's going to be all about. Yeah. So the NOWI N O W I, which stands for National Offshore Wind Institute, that we uh, affectionately call the the NOWI, is a uh, training center which will be extremely uh, comprehensive in its training operations for skills, competencies, certifications, all the things that are necessary for this um, uh, this industry. So people have to be uh, participating in these cert certified. Um, uh, wind training programs. We call it uh, global wind organizations. So we'll have health and safety, customized training, uh, lots of professional development, and also an entrepreneurial focus. So, you know, people who are thinking, well, gee, I'm not in offshore wind, but I would like to support this maybe through hospitality or manufacturing or real estate or banking and financing. Uh, and one of the things that people can uh, look at right now is our orientation to wind wind course. Uh, it's a, it's uh, online, so it's easy to, to do this from your home computer. Um, and it really helps people understand more about the sector, what's going to be a part of the supply chain, and just help people maybe who are just generally interested in this this new uh, industry, which is coming here to southeastern Massachusetts. So those are some ways that uh, folks can get um, excited about offshore wind and figure out where, where their place at the table is. But you had mentioned supporting diversity, equity, and inclusion. And yes, we uh, this is a really big piece of offshore wind. Offshore wind, you know, in other parts of the world has primarily been uh, a, a male-dominated field. And we're working hard to make sure that women and um, underrepresented uh, groups have a seat at the table. And so we have a new grant with uh, the Massachusetts Clean Energy Center, uh, partnering with Old Bedford Village, the Denison Memorial Community Center, 
Positive Acting Against Chemical Addiction, New Bedford Boys and Girls Club, uh, as a way to help stimulate interest in the careers. Uh, but also, uh, we will be launching a communications campaign across this region to help uh, people understand uh, what the jobs entail and what are some of those employment um, opportunities. So it's a very exciting time, and we hope people will think, hmm, maybe I need to be thinking about offshore wind. Yeah, no kidding. No kidding. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, like, I mean, it was like a huge muddy and, uh, you know, and it's it's part of the future, I think you'd have to say. Yes. And, you know, we also had a very interesting um, speaker series that got a lot of international attention called Equity and Offshore Wind. And people can go in and, and watch some of those um, those speeches as well. Um, you know, this was a really excellent um, uh, way to showcase women in offshore wind with our various partners, Vineyard Wind, for example, who we collaborate with on offshore wind um, uh, technical uh, certification, uh, Mayflower Wind, GE, Vestas, Siemens, Gamesa, those are all the big power companies. Um, and uh, we were able to showcase women who have fantastic roles in offshore wind um, here in the United States. So uh, if you're thinking that this isn't for you and you have a background that might be technical or business or what have you, there could be a place at the table and a really interesting career opportunity ahead for you. Oh, boy, all kinds of great info. I want to ask you one other question. I heard about this uh, a few days ago, and I know it's something we discussed before Bristol got, uh, you know, got going with the fall uh, uh, sessions and all of that. But it looks like uh, community colleges in Massachusetts have uh, have decided to go with a mandate for vaccines in what, in January? Is that true? Yes, we will be requiring uh, vaccinations for students and employees. Um, and it's, uh, you know, we have to make sure we are a public institution and public health is very important as we try to get back to normal. So students, what's really important for students to know is that, you know, if they're taking online classes and many of our students have always taken online classes, there's no need to get vaccinated. You can stay home. You can be safe. But if you are going to be here in person and you are going to be using our college campus services, whether they're in Attleboro, Taunton, New Bedford, or Fall River, then we are requiring uh, the vaccine. And we really hope that um, students will, and all of our employees that have yet to get vaccinated, will get out there and do that. You know, we're, we are lagging behind in Bristol County. Uh, we see two counties that are lagging behind, Hamden County and Bristol County. And these are the two locations where our case counts are the highest. And so, you know, we can see that relationship between lower vac vaccination rates and higher case counts. And we want all of our students and employees to be safe and healthy and learning. We don't want them to be worrying about this virus. Yeah, and just in case, you know, just in case, I mean, wintertime sometimes a little more difficult, difficult to deal with, and, you know, you, we don't want to be thinking about a surge, but just in case there is, you gotta, you got to plan and be ready for it, I think. Yeah, we do. You know, it's a different day now and, you know, we'll never we'll never get to a place where we can, you know, be as free as we were before unless we get those higher vaccination rates. And, you know, let's remind people the vaccine is safe and effective. And if you have questions, please consult your physician. Right. We just want everyone to know the most that they can about the vaccines. Thank you very much, uh, the President Laura. We appreciate it very much. Things are well with you. Everybody's feeling well. And uh, was it was it your husband who had it? What was it? Uh, did someone have a, uh, a leg injury or something? Was it, uh, my, my... Oh, my husband did. Yes, he's yeah. fully recovered, which yeah. is really great. And so, yeah, we're all ha happy and healthy here <laughs> in our uh, our our wonderful Bristol County, and it's uh, a great place to be at a beautiful time of year with our leaves starting to change. So, couldn't be happier. Excellent. All right. Thank you. Thank you. President Laura Douglas, we appreciate it very much. You have a great month of October. We'll touch base in November. Bye-bye. All right, take care.